Air Law. Why do we need it? You see, air transportation is unique. It involves a worldwide spectrum of airline companies and a bunch of other aviators with their flying machines. They all should play by common rules wherever they go on this planet, or otherwise shit will definitely hit the fan. Aviation law has developed over time in response to changing technologies and the evolving needs of the aviation industry. In the early days of aviation, there were few air transportation regulations, making accidents and incidents quite common. However, as the industry grew, so did the need for regulations to ensure safety and efficiency. The formation of the International Air Transport Association in 1945 helped to promote the standardization of air transport procedures. Still, the real groundbreaker was the establishment of the ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. Although each country has its own laws and regulations, with judicial decisions also playing a role in the development of aviation law, ICAO provided a global forum for the development of international aviation law and standards which became crucial with new technologies such as jet engines, radar, GPS, and drones flying into the scene. The History of ICAO ICAO was established on December 7, 1944 by the Chicago Convention. The convention was signed by 52 countries, including the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom, and it established the framework for the regulation of international air transport. Today, ICAO has 193 member states and is headquartered in Montreal, Canada the purpose and function of ICAO. ICAO promotes the safe and orderly development of international civil aviation and ensures that international air transport is conducted safely, securely, efficiently, and environmentally sustainable. Basically, it's a global forum for member states to discuss and address international civil aviation issues such as air traffic management, aviation safety, security, and environmental protection. It develops global standards and recommended practices for designing, operating, and maintaining maintaining aircraft, airports, and air traffic management systems. ICAO also provides technical assistance and training to member states to help them develop and implement safe and efficient aviation systems. It facilitates the exchange of information and best practices among member states and promotes international cooperation on civil aviation issues. How ICAO notifies and implements legislation. ICAO notifies and implements legislation primarily through its standards and recommended practices, SARPs, and related documents. SARPs are developed by ICAO in consultation with member states and other stakeholders. ICAO uses several methods to notify member states and other stakeholders of new SARPs and changes to existing SARPs, including publication. ICAO publishes new or revised SARPs and related documents in its annexes to the Convention on international civil aviation regularly updated and published on the ICAO website. Circulars ICAO issues circulars to notify member states of new or revised SARPs, amendments to annexes, and other relevant information. These circulars are distributed electronically and can be accessed on the ICAO website. Meetings and conferences ICAO holds regular meetings and conferences to discuss and update SARPs and related documents. These events allow member states and other stakeholders to discuss and provide input on new or revised SARPs. Once notified of new or revised SARPs, member states must implement them in their national regulations and procedures. This may involve amending existing laws and regulations or developing new ones. Member states are encouraged to work closely with ICAO and other member states to ensure their regulations are are consistent with international standards and recommended practices. ICAO also provides technical assistance and training to member states to help them implement SARPs and related documents. This may include capacity building programs, workshops, and training courses to help member states develop regulatory and operational frameworks to ensure compliance with international standards and recommended practices. Many different manuals are related to air traffic control, but they are probably the most relevant one. ICAO Annex 2 – Rules of the Air it's like the rules on the road, but for aircraft. How to behave when operating an airplane. ICAO Annex 11, Air Traffic Services. Here, basic principles of ATC can be found, prevent collisions between aircraft, prevent collisions between aircraft in the maneuvering area, and obstructions in that area. ICAO Dock 4444. Air Traffic Management. This is the guide for air traffic controllers on controlling the aircraft in different situations. ICAO Dock 9432. Manual of Radio Telephony. This is the manual on what phrases to use when controlling the aircraft. 
the impact that IKO has on air traffic control. IKO plays a critical role in the development and implementation of AT procedures and standards on a global scale. IKO sets international standards and recommended practices for air traffic control operations, including airspace design, communication protocols, navigation procedures, and aircraft separation requirements. Air navigation service providers and aviation regulatory authorities worldwide use these standards to ensure that air traffic control systems operate safely and efficiently. IKO also provides guidance and support to member states in developing and implementing ATC systems, including training and certification of air traffic controllers and establishing air traffic management systems. In addition, ICAO facilitates communication and cooperation among member states on air traffic control issues, promoting the harmonization of ATC procedures and systems to ensure safe and seamless global air traffic management. What would you like to know about ATC next? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way.